On Tuesday, in the capital of Denmark, it was an event compared to the one that brought down the spire of Notre Dame five years ago. But this wasn't a cathedral, it was a historic stock exchange building in Copenhagen, and it had been standing in the city's center since the 1600s. As much as half of the structure, which now houses the Danish Chamber of Commerce, was reportedly destroyed. That included its famous spire, which depicted three twisted dragon's tails. But everyone inside was able to get out safely, and even some of those who were nearby witnessing the fire rushed to rescue some of the building's historic artwork. Like Notre Dame, the Danish building was getting renovations when the blaze broke out. It's not known yet what caused it, but once it was brought under control, a local fire chief said everything inside that could burn was somehow affected. The CEO of the Danish Chamber of Commerce says the landmark will be rebuilt, quote, no matter what. Hi, I'm Carl Azus. We're moving from Denmark to Dubai, next today on The World From A to Z. It's an emirate, like a state, of the United Arab Emirates. It's located on the Persian Gulf, and while Dubai typically has a hot desert climate, getting only around four or five inches of rain per year, the city got more than six inches in a 24-hour period earlier this week. Authorities say it was the most intense rainfall Dubai has seen in three quarters of a century, and the resulting floods killed at least one person in that emirate and 18 in the neighboring country of Oman. Rainfall like this is something this dry region simply doesn't have the infrastructure to handle. It is unbelievable to see this kind of impact from the rainfall. And what, of course, we've been hearing from authorities is incredible cleanup time now. It's a sunny day in Dubai. That will help a little. But let me tell you, the city has come to a grinding halt. Road conditions made travel hazardous or impossible. Runway conditions made the airport almost look like a shipyard, and this is at Dubai International, which was just ranked the second busiest airport on Earth. There is some controversy over whether officials in the United Arab Emirates had been trying to make it rain before the storm rolled in. Time Magazine reported yesterday that authorities had attempted cloud seeding earlier this week. This is the process of spraying a chemical, often silver iodide, into clouds in the hopes of increasing the likelihood of precipitation. Several countries around the world have been doing this for decades with mixed results, but the government of the UAE denied cloud seeding immediately in advance of or during the country's flooding rains this week. A shocking discovery in southwest England as a massive World War II era bomb was unearthed in the middle of a residential garden. Officials were quick to declare an emergency and some 10,000 people were evacuated from the area. As recent as 2021, similar ordinance was discovered in this region, which officials solved by detonating it right on the spot. But this time around, disposal experts instead transported the 1,100 pound bomb to the nearby sea for secure detonation. World A to Z.org isn't only your favorite website, it's also where you can request a shout out on our show or sign up for our newsletter, which gives you a preview of what's coming up each day. Again, that's at World A to Z.org. And if you're watching from YouTube, please click the subscribe button at youtube.com slash at the world A to Z so you never miss a show with me. On this date in world history. The Midnight Ride of Paul Revere took place on this date in 1775. The American silversmith was sent to warn colonial forces that British troops were coming prior to the battles of Lexington and Concord. That warning helped the colonists win the first campaign of the American Revolutionary War. San Francisco's strongest earthquake on record struck on this date in 1906. The 7.9 magnitude tremor lasted for more than 40 seconds, destroying hundreds of city blocks and setting off fires that burned for days. An estimated 3,000 people were killed and hundreds of thousands were left homeless. And 75 years ago today, Ireland became a republic. Six of Ireland's northern counties decided to remain part of the United Kingdom and tensions between Northern Ireland and the Republic simmered for decades. Word analysis. Which of these words was derived from the Latin term lingua? Slang, speech, tongue, voice. 
While the answer is related to a Middle English term meaning to scold, it came from a Latin term meaning tongue. You might have heard the saying that the tongue is the strongest muscle in the body. Health experts say it's actually made up of eight muscles and that it's hard to say whether it's really the strongest since there are different ways of measuring strength. The heart that constantly pumps blood, the masseter that closes our jaws, the glutes that help us stay upright and climb stairs. All of these are powerful muscles. But besides its role in talking, tasting, moving saliva, and helping filter out germs, the tongue is a marvel that can also indicate the status of our health. Your tongue can reveal telltale signs of health problems. Dr. Gabriel Gavrilescu with Cleveland Clinic Florida says monitoring your tongue is a simple way to spot potential issues. It can be quickly done while brushing teeth. To make sure we notice changes and if we do notice to to see what they what they uh, signify. Significant changes may signify a problem. A whitish tongue can indicate a fungal infection, an inflammatory condition, or a potentially precancerous condition. A yellowish or greenish color tongue is usually due to poor oral hygiene and can come from smoking, chewing tobacco, being dehydrated, or taking certain vitamins. An orangish tongue is also commonly caused by poor oral hygiene or dry mouth, certain antibiotics, and some food foods like carrots. A bright red tongue may indicate food or medication allergies or a vitamin B deficiency. A gray hue may indicate eczema, according to a 2017 study, and a black tongue can mean there's a keratin buildup, which can lead to a thickening of skin. If you have a blue tongue, it may indicate a lack of oxygen in your blood, and a doctor should be called right away. We have to be mindful about what we put in our body. Gavrilescu says maintaining a healthy tongue color means eating a balanced diet, not using tobacco products, drinking plenty of water, and visiting a dentist regularly. For Health Minute, I'm Andy Gaither. We're traveling thousands of miles cross country to visit some of today's viewers, starting in the evergreen state of Washington. We want to recognize the students and teachers of Sumner High School. It's in the city of Sumner. Making a stop in the volunteer state, it's great to have Mrs. Pugh's class with us today from Stewart's Creek High School. It's in Smyrna, Tennessee. And last but not least, we've got Mrs. Daubert's class with us from the Old Line State of Maryland. Big hello to everyone at Lindale Middle School in the community of Linthicum. We've done stories on an enormous cat and on a slap happy cat slapping a judge at a cat show. But this blur across your screen? This is the flying cat. Meet Remy, a Chicago area Bengal cat. <coughs> Two-year-old Remy went behind some hanging coats. His housemate, Lucy the cat, decided to come play. But when Lucy knocked a coat off the hook, Remy went bonkers. The cat was fine. He landed on this. An interactive cat toy. Commenters were awestruck, saying, My cat has wings. They called him the Michael Jordan of cats. But I've never seen him get air like that in my life. The stratospheric leap went explosively viral, and many labeled Remy the very definition of a scaredy cat. But Remy took being jumpy to a whole new level. Of course, when it comes to cats, there are short airs and long airs. There are Himmel Aryans, Skyberians, Erangetis, Savannah Airs, and Persians. While they don't always land on their feet when they take a flying leap, sometimes hitting the couch with a meowch, they do catch quite a new view when they make a feline to the catmosphere. I'm Carl Azuz, just kidding around on the world from A to Z. We hope the rest of your Thursday is meowsome.